Hey, uh, August 10th, I uh, want to welcome everyone to uh, the live stream, or if you're uh, catching us on YouTube, that's great too. Thanks for tuning into the channel today uh, in our webinar. Can you see a link? Yes, I will. We will be uh, talking about a firewall and uh, why you need a firewall and the benefits of having a good firewall will be the topic today. Uh, let me get Mr. Kennedy is going to join us as always. Let me get him logged in here real quick. Let's see here. All right, just sent him. Okay, today, uh, to recap our topic, we'll be talking about why do you need a firewall and the benefits of having a good firewall. Um, a firewall is really um, a foundational component uh, of any type of uh, network security architecture. Uh, and there are some definite things that you need to know about when you get a new firewall and exactly what, uh, what it provides you and what it can do for you to protect your organization. Uh, as always, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put those in the Q&A box if you're live streaming with us. Make a comment on the YouTube video if you'd like us to uh, follow along that way as well. So uh, either way, uh, we'd love to uh, address any questions you have uh, so, you can, uh, so we can get those answered for you. So uh, ask them during the webinar. This is sort of a, uh, we do these webinars that are very informal. So if you have something along the way that we mention or we talk about, uh, please feel free to, uh, to jump in the Q&A box uh, to comment or ask a question. Uh, and there's Mr. Kennedy. Thank you very much, Mr. Kennedy, for logging on. How are you doing today? Doing all right. Barely, barely made it. Just, uh, just so happens I was installing a firewall, and I know that's what we're talking about today. So I just got back from that. All right. Well, <laughs> excellent. Good deal. Thanks for glad you could join us here. All right. So um, I was just telling everyone, if you have any questions, please put it in the Q&A box down there on the Zoom. Be happy to get an answer, any kind of answers uh, for you if you need any. Um, so looking at just our agenda for today's webinar, uh, it's pretty simple. We're going to talk about, well, what is a firewall? What does it do? How does it work? And benefits of a firewall and features you should have enabled right now. So these will be features where if you're not running them on your current firewall or you're not sure if they are running at all, then uh, you need to probably be concerned about the perimeter uh, of your network. And of course, if you have any Q&As, please uh, put those in. We'll address any of those at the end, but also along the way as we uh, go through the webinar today. So, so let's talk about for a few minutes, well, what is a firewall? Uh, we get this question a lot, and uh, you know, what does it do for me? How does it work? Um, you know, in the most basic definition, you know, a firewall is just a security device. Uh, you know, it's computer hardware, software. It can protect your network by filtering traffic and blocking outsiders from gaining unauthorized access to the private data on your computer. So that is probably the most basic definition that I could find. Uh, of a firewall. Um, it, it basically sits in between the internet uh, and your device, whether it be your servers or your computers, and it helps uh, protect uh, that device from anything, from unauthorized access. So uh, as you know, your device, your computer, your server, it exchanges traffic with the internet and accesses websites and data and different files and such. And the firewall helps uh, make sure that uh, only things that you want, uh, you know, make it into your network. Uh, not only does it block unwanted traffic, but it also can help block malicious software uh, from infecting your computer. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Uh, and I think this is a key thing. Uh, and maybe Lee, if you want to pipe in here about firewalls, can provide different levels of protection. And that is, uh, you know, something we get asked about and talked about uh, quite a bit with clients as far as you know what level of protection they need or maybe even what level of protection that you may be getting. Um, 
Yeah, and, and keep in mind too, there's different levels of firewalls also. I'm sure we'll get into some of some of that here shortly. Yeah, there, there's all you know. If we take the, sort of the firewalls and break it down to a couple different uh, areas, you know, you got they live in several different places. You have firewall that you may have a corporate firewall that lives out on uh, your corporate the edge of your corporate network, which manages traffic for the entire network. You may actually have uh, web application firewalls that help manage traffic to and from a web application. And then you also have what's called the Windows firewall, which is your endpoint firewall, which can also help protect it from unwanted traffic. So uh, you may have firewalls in many different layers within your network, uh, but in each one of those may provide different types or different levels of protection. So, and you know, basically it's just a device that sits between you and the internet and it makes sure, make sure that uh, you know, all the traffic going to your device is uh, is scanned and is authorized to access it. So how does it work? Um, you know, a firewall system, what it, you know, every time that you send a request out to the internet, uh, you know, you send packets of information and data uh, of different types, you know, di digital units, if you want to call that, over the internet uh, and networks requesting information. Well, the firewall will use a set of rules that's usually defined uh, by the end user company in order to make sure that that traffic is allowed. Um, if it is not allowed based on a certain rule, then it would block that data uh, from going inbound and outbound. So, you know, within every firewall, all traffic goes on rules and security rules. It's just like we have security rules for maybe our house. Uh, there are certain people that we want to allow into our house and there are certain people we may just stop at the door and say thank you very much. Firewall works somewhere the same way, just on your network and across your digital networks. So it acts as almost like a guard uh, of your network. Uh, so it, it will either allow entry or not allow entry based on the type of traffic, where it's coming from, and you know which port it may uh, be uh, you know, coming in or out on. Uh, so it allows you to define trusted sources. So if you know you always want to allow traffic from say google.com or microsoft 365 or maybe an application you use on amazon web services or microsoft azure then you can put those specific ip addresses on an allow list and everything else would be on a disallow list uh, so this is something common that we see as a a ruler setting uh, with the firewall uh, so we want to make sure that you know wherever whatever traffic we allow or don't allow in you know, the firewall is the person that is, or is the device that's guarding that traffic and that um, egress and entry point into your local or to your corporate network. Um, so it, it, it's pretty simple the way it works, but uh, it also can be very technical in the way you have to describe it. So let's talk about what it does uh, in a little more detail. So Lee, if you had to come across a debt defining what a firewall does, how would you define it? I've got some definitions up here, but how would you define a firewall and what it does? Yeah, I think you, your explanation was a good explanation. It's a gateway device that um, makes decisions based on several different aspects of traffic leaving or coming into your corporate network or home network or you know your internal private plan uh, to the outside network. And, there, and based on a set of rules, policies, the ACL that uh, that traffic will run through, you know, will route or uh, determine the, uh, the result of what's done with that traffic. Um, but fundamentally, you know, it's really blocking the outside from getting in is, you know, I guess the old school purpose of a firewall. Right, yeah. I mean, I always think generally when we talk with firewalls uh, to clients and in means of security, we're talking about preventing outside traffic from getting into the network. So we want to make sure that there are no one that is, you know, any kind of unauthorized person, a hacker, a malicious individual is able to infiltrate the network and, of course, you know, exploit any kind of assets on the internal side of the network. So. The firewall is really the the very first barrier they're going to encounter if they try to perform any type of intrusion. So, uh, so when they uh, this is a, a pretty much a standard practice among uh, you know when you're either doing a red team exercise or you're doing a security assessment. I know we've done several of those. We always start with the public 
network. You know, how does the company present itself to the open internet? Uh, you know, every company, if you have an internet connection, you have a public IP space. And uh, that public IP, IP space is advertised, uh, you know, over the internet. So you can send in restrictive traffic, but you have to protect that space. Uh, and usually a firewall is what you use to protect it. And we've seen firewalls act different ways when we try to uh, you know, gain access to that system or we try to scan that system. Sometimes uh, it'll block our traffic. Sometimes it won't do anything at all. So, so there are some things that we look for uh, or that we want that firewall to do. I think, you know, in my mind, Lee, what I want it to do, number one, if someone scans my public ISP space, uh, I want it to, number one, log that traffic and make sure we know about it. Number two, I want it to block it because uh, generally if any kind of legitimate traffic traveling across our open network or open internet to my IP space uh, that shouldn't be there. If they're scanning, then they're looking to cause problems. Yeah, probably and so up to we, no good. Probably up to no good. So we want to make sure that traffic is identified and number two, that it takes action on it. And, and third thing, which really goes here about the network traffic, uh, it also can help filter network traffic uh, to your internet. That way uh, it can prevent things like drive-by downloads to where if you access a site, the firewall can and, and a lot of times will prevent any type of download from happening or automatic download you know based on how you set it up and what type of services you may subscribe to so you know the firewall ends up being an extremely important piece of your overall security posture simply because you know it is going to be that that first line of defense between you uh, the outside world and the malicious hackers and malicious individuals that are trying to exploit your assets that are out there so let's talk about the benefits of the firewall. And I really want to, po to pose this that's really through what risks you have on not having one. And Lee, we can talk about these in more detail. So without a firewall, you're accepting every connection into your network from anyone. So Lee, what do you think would happen if we just stuck a laptop and put it out on the open internet? Uh, it? I think within minutes it would be discovered and people would be trying to Depending on what's available, log into it, find vulnerabilities with it. You would see traffic hit it pretty much immediately. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I, th I think so. And we've done a test like that before. I know I had a, um, I had a machine, a virtual machine. I opened it up to the network, to the internet. Uh, you know, on a specific port. I think it was uh, SSH or, or Telnet port, port 23, I believe is what it was, just to see how long it would take. For it to be discovered and someone to try to compromise it, it took about three minutes. Uh, so it did not take her long. So, you know, if you don't have this barrier between, you know, your computer and the open internet, then you're really are, are basically leaving a door wide open for anything to try to connect into it uh, without anything stopping them. So it almost like, you know, using your house as the example, uh, leaving your front door wide open uh, and your back door wide open. Uh, and your window is wide open just to allow anyone to come in and walk through your house and basically do whatever they wanted to do, uh, however they wanted to do. So, uh, you know, your risk here, if you don't have that firewall in place, then any connection that's going to be made uh, across the network uh, will be accepted, uh, you know, to your network. And a lot of times that could be uh, malicious. Uh, not having a firewall to leave your devices exposed, which should allow someone to gain control over your computer network so uh, you know that is uh, goes along the same way same lines there that uh, you're basically leaving your machine and your corporate network exposed if you don't have a good firewall in place now let's talk about the different types of firewall now we know that a lot of times we see stateful packet inspection uh, we see next generation firewalls we also just see sort of what I call sort of allow disallow type firewall so Lee what's your opinion experience with the different types of firewalls that are out there um, you know, we're big proponents of the third generation firewalls and the security suites. You know, the firewall is a great tool and, you know, it's a big step in the right direction to have something at, a, at the interface of your network to block or have the control to manipulate traffic the way you want to. The third generation firewalls is kind of a deluxe version of that. You get all these other options, whether it be IPS or, you know, uh, gateway antivirus, web blocker, you know, there's a bunch of other services that you can get and go along with your firewall uh, that just make it way stronger than the initial 
Um, I think the last last one you said is you know pass uh, stop pass kind of traffic or, or punch holes in a firewall. There's way more to it, and then also you know you can have a firewall in place, and you can have uh, these features in place, but it's really important to to know what you're doing and have it configured correctly because you can have a firewall in place, but if it's configured incorrectly or I would say you know, have recommended uh, configurations. You're just as vulnerable as not having a firewall. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we come across that quite often. We'll, we'll when we do security assessments, we'll do a firewall evaluation. We'll look at how it's configured, how it's set up, and uh, you know we'll sort of go down our checklist of best practices. And we usually do find that many clients have a really good firewall device. Uh, you know they really invested in a good device that has a lot of features, but the configuration of it is just not where it needs to be. There's a lot to be desired in that area. Or the lack of configuration. They have yeah. all this, this tool set and they never use it or configure it. Yeah. So they they may have you know one rule for all their traffic. They they may have uh, the services may not be enabled on that rule. So uh, we usually find a lot a lot of things that uh, you know can help. Uh, always find things that we can that clients can do better when configuring their firewall. So as part of this, what I also did is I pulled up, well, what does a firewall look like when it's rolling? So what I've got seen, what you're seeing here, and I hope it's showing up, this is the, uh, the, the traffic monitor on the firewall here at our corporate office. So as you can see, uh, you know, even though most of us are working from home, there's still a lot of traffic going over uh, the firewall. The, the firewall is logging all this traffic from multiple IP addresses to certain IP addresses internally. Uh, you see all that red show up. The red shows up. That is denied traffic. So that means that the, the, the firewall has picked something up what there's not a rule defined for or that traffic is trying to do something malicious. So if we uh, you know look at that a little more closely and just want to filter this out by denied traffic, you, know, you can see we have a lot of traffic trying to hit our network. Uh, you know, trying to scan it to see, you know, what is going on and, and trying to peruse our network, trying to probe our network to see exactly, uh, you know, if something can be, uh, you know, exploited. So uh, my imagine it, I imagine that, you know, every network right now is facing this same problem. You see here there's two or three, four or five requests a second. I'm not saying all of these are malicious, but this is traffic that is either inbound and possibly outbound. Uh, that is attempting to access our firewall. So let's pause it and let's have a little fun with this because I saw a couple of things in here. Uh, you know, let's look at this piece of traffic right here. So this right here was a denied RDP request. Hmm, imagine that. We see this quite a bit uh, with clients still having a remote desktop open. Well, you generally want to have that closed in your firewall. So here is a specific piece of denied traffic is hitting our AT&T connection. It's hitting 3389, which is remote desktop. It's coming from the 92.63.196. And well, why did it get blocked? It got blocked because that traffic is sourcing in all places but Russia. So we have geolocation. I want to talk about that in just a few minutes enabled. So that allows us to block traffic from certain countries. And you can probably see there is, uh, imagine if I wanted to Let's just do this little search here. Geo underscore SRC equals quote RUS. So you can see that's how many requests we got from Russia just in the last few minutes. Uh, we're blocking that traffic, obviously, all of it's red, that's denied traffic, but you can see that, uh, you know, there, this is activity that's happening on our firewall as we are holding this webinar. It's probably happening on your network as well. And if you don't have a firewall in place, then these type of connections are going to be successful or could be successful uh, either to perform reconnaissance on your network or to actually access your network. So we do see this quite a bit. And I wanted to show this as an example of, well, you know, this is why our firewall is valuable. This is the biggest benefit you have of it is the fact that all this traffic's coming in, you know, or, you know, coming in externally and it could be coming from a source that could be malicious or a source that could uh, could be someone trying to exploit your network uh, over time. So uh, something very uh, interesting to watch and you can see we get some reports on this as well that show us 
different types of traffic that happens. So, uh, you know, the deny traffic is what we're interested in, and this is exactly why you need to have, you know, that firewall. So you can deny this traffic. See, there's a lot of traffic coming from India, the Netherlands, uh, Russia, a lot of stuff, Kazakhstan. Uh, geolocation is a big part of our security policy, but you can see there's a lot of traffic uh, being sent to our RIP uh, from those locations. So, uh, you know, if you don't have this, if we didn't have this firewall in place, then we would make ourselves much more susceptible to attack. Um, a client, I mean, an attacker could actually shut down our network. Um, I know we use WatchGuard firewalls, and based on my knowledge of those, you know, they have uh, capabilities to prevent against, you know, uh, DDoS attacks and all service IPS and, and so forth. So I've got some uh, specific ones listed up here, Lee, of uh, different risks and benefits. What are some, I guess, do you have any, any good war stories on how a firewall may have prevented, uh, say, a phishing attack? Yeah, and, you know, the phishing attack, you know, that's for more on-site exchange, you know, kind of, that was not as, as big as now. Now I've got some history with it, you know, you know on-site exchange kind of getting eliminated about the phishing and private hosting. But I, I have set up and configured phishing and been able to go look at the logs and all the fish emails that it would catch in the service. And then there's a lot of them. Phishing is, I know we've talked about it in the past, the easiest and most abundant uh, malicious tip that's going on right now. And, it, and yeah. it, it is the lead, it's the lead way to malware, ransomware, data loss, you know, it's it's kind of, it's the gate opener for all those things to happen. So um, a lot of that configuration now is outside the firewall in, in Office 365 or the hosting party. But um, yeah, phishing, it's, it's, phishing is, you know, really the only one that scares me the most just because it's so abundant, it's so big. And you know, there's a lot, of, so, a lot of users that are uneducated on how to recognize and or report when they think they might be pushed. So. All right, I got a got a question come in. Yeah. Uh, you know, to finish up that that thought on phishing attacks, you know, email continues to be the number one way that we get attacked. Um, I have seen a firewall actually stop a phishing attack, but not necessarily stop the email, but stop the person clicking on the email. So uh, we have seen very, you know, sometimes a phishing email will get through a filter on 365 or, or maybe an advanced filter and uh, there will be a click that happens. But I actually have seen, you know, a user click on the link and then the firewall stop the traffic to that link because that link may have been either, either on the denial list, explicitly on the denial list, or identified as a malicious URL or it also may have been uh, in a hosted, the server may be hosted in a country that's not allowed by geolocation. So uh, I think the firewalls are great, uh, a great uh, you know, security uh, measure to have just to sort of wrap around the end user to where if they do make a mistake, uh, maybe the firewall can catch it uh, or stop it. Yeah, and keep in mind too that a firewall uh, it's not a one solution. You know, think of it as a layered approach. A fire is a firewall is one step in the right direction to a layered security. It is. Uh, on the question, uh, Daryl presented a question about configuring. How would you suggest configure a firewall to allow credit card machines uh, pass through policy to all users, including guests and block sites for children? Any suggestion we can do? Don't slow down the connection. Uh, <coughs> I think some of that depends on how the credit card machine is set up. Uh, generally, you uh, have two ways that credit cards are, are a facilitator of the internet. One, you access a gateway, a credit card gateway, where you go to a website and you uh, actually enter the credit card information there. Uh, the second way is you may actually have uh, a credit card machine that connects out over the internet uh, to a specific site or uh, connectivity to actually process things. I would say number one, we always want to have dedicated policies, uh, you know, for any type of known service. So, to Daryl, if we know that credit card machine accesses the open internet and goes to out to a specific public IP and you know, over a certain port, we want to make sure there's a rule in the firewall specifically to handle just that machine. It's always assigned an internal IP address on the inside of the network 
and you want to make sure you have a rule this specifically to that. That way, number one, you can log traffic to it. Number two, you can isolate uh, that machine, and that way, you, and that further allows you to uh, allow more users to get to that machine. Um, I don't think you're going to see any slowdown on the connection if you do that. Uh, slowdowns usually occur in a couple of ways. Uh, you know, sometimes if you have a firewall that's undersized, then uh, that could slow down your connection because you know, as we saw, you know, with our, you know, our firewall here, I mean, it's processing all these packets and all this traffic coming through. So it needs to have, you know, enough firepower, uh, processing power to process that. Otherwise, it could slow down. So if you are seeing a slower connection, it could be your firewall's undersized. Uh, you know, also, I think having those policies broken out to where you can manage them better would be a lot, a lot more effective. And it would also prevent the slowdown. Uh, he also talks about block blocking sites for children. Uh, I know, uh, Lee, you got any recommendations on that on how to block sites for children? Absolutely. There should be, depending on your firewall, there should be a web blocker service that comes along with that. Uh, I'd configure it for, for all your policies in some degree. But that's the, that's the luxury of having different policies, like Brian was saying. You have, that's not a global change. You know, you, you can... Um, you can modify per IP address or you know, per policy, per device at your house or at the office. So it gives you a lot of control, um, firewall does on how you want to set things up. But yeah, web blocker would, would take care of that for you. Yeah, I, I can speak to that about blocking sites from children uh, very much so. I have uh, two teenagers and one who is soon to be a teenager. So I'm always very aware and want to be aware of what type of sites they have access to either deliberately or on accident. Uh, so I actually have a watch guard uh, device at my house that I use, uh, you know, to help control and, and protect my home network. And one, what I've done, is I've, I've actually have a policy in there for web traffic that is only tied to their machines. Uh, so, uh, you know, they're either by their, their name of the machine or by the IP address that I sign those machines. Then I use that URL and web filtering uh, capability within WebLocker, and I can block categories that, you know, any, any website that falls in this category or explicit, explicitly deny certain websites as well. Uh, is that way I know all their traffic rides over those policies. So, so I think, Daryl, uh, one, configure specific policies. Uh, you know, that way you can control what accesses uh, that traffic, what traffic goes across that policy for a credit card, and use that URL and web filtering option uh, to block specific sites and, and even go as far as to explicitly deny some sites is what I'd recommend. Uh, as far as slowing down the connection, you shouldn't see a slowdown on your connection if you have a properly sized firewall uh, and uh, it is configured correctly. Uh, you know, most of the slowdown I, I have on my connection is usually due to my provider, unfortunately. Uh, so if we look at these across these other, here's uh, some some of the other risks uh, that we see with with uh, not having a firewall, the risk of it. So, you know, we talked about phishing attacks, how it may fit in there, malware. So uh, I know there's two ways our watch card firewalls protect against malware. One, uh, the uh, denial list of any kind of sites that may host malware. So, uh, you know, each... You know, every so often, you know, 